Welcome to my channel. I'm Danny Marie AUC. And I just did something really exciting. I attended my very first albinism conference. Thanks to current events, um, so many conferences that are going on recently have been moved virtually. And that's created a lot of challenges, but honestly, it's also allowed a lot more people to attend conferences that wouldn't normally have been able to, myself included. If you guys wanna support what I'm doing here, like, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you can catch my latest videos. Let's get into this. So, you'll have to excuse my voice. <laughs> so the conference started on Thursday and I ended up getting sick beginning Friday night. So I ended up just having a sinus infection. I mean, it was pretty bad, but I went to the doctor yesterday and got some good meds, so I'm on the mend. I have my water. And um, I have some Gatorade too. Gatorade's not my favorite. I, uh, I actually prefer body armors or just electrolyte water, honestly. Gatorade has a lot of sugar and citric acid in it, and it's kind of meh. There is an organization called the National Organization of Albinism and Hypopigmentation, or NOAA, as we will henceforth be referring to it. Um, it was founded in 1982 by some people with albinism, some researchers who were curious about albinism, and uh, it's been growing ever since. So, fun story, they chose the name NOAA because the founders had recently read that the Bible character Noah was thought to be a person with albinism. I mean, I don't know much about that personally, but I'll link my coverage of the whole conference in the description. And there is an article in there discussing this particular topic. So I've attended a few smaller conferences in the past, usually related to counseling and while I was in school getting my master's degree in counseling. These usually make me a little nervous because honestly, I struggle to recognize people or recognize whether I've met that person at the conference before. And sometimes I also fail to see social cues. Okay, so I was at one of the conferences and I was a door greeter, okay. And I greeted people as they came through and would tell them where their rooms were, wherever their session was that they were looking for. And I know at least one time, I must have greeted someone twice because all I heard was, yeah, I've been by here before. You've greeted me already. <laughs> I'm just like, man, you got two greetings. Don't you feel special? Like, why you, why you got to be mean about it? Like, but anyway, I digress. Things like this happen when you're blind, and it did. So, back to the NOAA conference. <laughs> I got to attend from the comfort of my computer chair, and thank God, because I sure got sick. <laughs> but um here I am in my computer chair sorry it's a very squeaky chair the first day was really all about easing people into the conference and sort of helping people become familiar with the platforms that the conference was going to be spread across the opening sessions and the orientation focused on details about Noah and its creation how it got to be where it is now and things like that and also they gave out some awards, a scholarship, and there was a lovely presenter who discussed the things that were being done throughout the world to increase albinism awareness. Some really cool stuff being done right now. Honestly, I didn't know all about that, and uh, I feel like I have a lot more to learn in that area, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. The first day, I also attended a town hall meeting. They're held on a platform called Gatherly. It's a web platform that is functional entirely in your browser. So you log in and you are given an icon with your name and you essentially join into a floor. And other people are in the floor, dragging their icons around, clicking where you click the icon moves. And as you move toward a person or a group of people, you are dropped into a video chat. And the video chat seems to work pretty smoothly, honestly. I didn't have any real um, negative experiences with it. The tech worked well. Um, it was pretty easy to use. I am not sure how friendly it is to those who use screen readers or those who have 
<clears throat> or those who have less functional vision than I have. But um, that would have been something I would have loved to explore had I not <laughs> been sick. But um, so anyway, you'd walk through essentially or dropped into the lobby. So each floor also had an elevator and an exit. So you could drag your little character or click over to the elevator and check out the other floors. So for the adults, they actually had floors for adults with albinism, floors for parents and grandparents with albinism, and there was a lobby. They had also created a teen and tween um, section that was password protected, which, um, good job, Noah. Overall, it was really cool getting to speak to some of the people I hadn't spoken to in years, but had seen sort of in passing on Facebook. And it was just really fun to connect with a couple new people and hear some fun stories and chat about some of the things about the conference and just have a good time. I actually had seen groups of 13 or more that worked successfully and I myself was in groups anywhere from two to eight people and, and it ran pretty smoothly. Yeah, um, it's really cool to see what happens when need really drives innovation in the tech world. So for those of you who don't know, I am a humongous tech fan and that is something I absolutely want to cover on this channel. I um, <laughs> just haven't gotten to it yet. And honestly, covering tech can get a bit pricey. So keep an eye out for that. So day two dropped a whole lot of information on us. <laughs> it began with a session about the latest research in albinism. Um, I think the highlight of this really covered this, this pretty huge natural history study that was aiming to study albinism, the effects that albinism had on people with it, and how how those effects will change over time. So they're actually in the data analysis stage of their trial and I honestly can't wait to see where they go with it. I can't wait to see the collaborations that come out of it, the things that we can learn just about lives and how they're impacted by albinism. I'm, I'm a bit of a study nerd too. Um, honestly love that part of my master's degree and my undergrad, so. Um, yeah, another tidbit about me. Just big old nerd. <laughs> another huge session that took place, it was a Zoom panel discussion and it involved six different experts. So I think there were five doctors and one RN who is a, a bit of an expert on hermensky pudlock syndrome. And essentially they did a Q&A session and it, it was quite thorough, very long. Um, I took very, very detailed notes on it. You can find that also in the link below. It was on the day two post for those of you looking specifically for it. Um, I'm not going to go over all the information that was in that Q&A in this video, but you can look for bits of that information being sprinkled throughout videos of mine and on various topics and things. So, you know, just keep an eye out for some more, um, more good information. This day also included some other fun Zoom sessions. So there was some Zoom um, hobby breakouts for things like photography, arts and crafts, sports, and I think there was one other one too. There was also a virtual escape room. I do hate I missed that. Um, I wasn't sure what my schedule was going to be like and I probably would have ended up missing it anyway. But um, there was also a cocktail hour. I did get to catch that and I've got the drink recipe on my website as well. And there's also a mocktail version for those of you who aren't 21 or don't enjoy alcohol. So go check it out. Have fun. Day three was pretty pretty well mixed honestly. There was a good session on the genetics of albinism, sort of the basics. Um, I highly recommend you look into this one. I will also be making a video on this, utilizing some of the information I learned and hopefully some of the charts too. Um, the doctor researcher who led the session is named Dr. Murray Brilliant and he did an excellent job of turning <laughs> uh, the kind of information that can be a bit overwhelming into something that was pretty digestible. So overall it was great. Um, also check out his work. He's done some incredible things over his years. One of my favorite sessions, just because it speaks to my heart a little bit, was a session on resilience. Um, it was offered by um, a counselor. And I just love mental health topics and I love when they're covered at these things because I feel like we do not get enough mental health topics, honestly. 
and we need them, especially among a crowd of people who deal with hateful comments and just struggles that um, the average person doesn't often deal with. So I think anything involving mental health is great with me. Um, this particular topic was resilience, and resilience is basically our ability to handle negative events in our lives, deal with them, and then move past them. And it is absolutely a skill that you can learn. It is not something you're born with. I will be covering more mental health topics, such as resilience, depression, anxiety, how I cope with those things, from my counseling degree perspective and also just from the perspective of someone who has dealt with depression and anxiety in my own life. I mean, I've been there. So, I look forward to discussing that with you guys. There were also lots of sessions for children in this day. There was a no-bake dessert making session just for kids. There was a reading of books by various authors for different age groups too, so that was a great one. Um, the books, you can find them. They looked adorable. I haven't checked them out myself, but they are also linked in the information below. Really, this conference does an excellent job of catering to a lot of different groups. So they cater to the children, the parents and grandparents of the children, any other family members who attend, and they cater to the adults with albinism. I mean, they've, of course they cover lots of topics, but really I just love the work they do to try their best to be inclusive. Um, I gotta say there's only one real group that I did not see represented in sessions or otherwise, and that is people of color with albinism. So people of color with albinism face unique and different challenges than those of us who are not people of color. So they face different kinds of racism. They face colorism within their own community and other topics that are just very unique to them. And I'm not gonna get into this. I will let them do the discussing of that topic because they're gonna know way more than I do, obviously. But um, I just want you guys to know that it's out there, that it's a thing, and that it's important. The last day, day four, was really all about winding down. So there was a yoga class for adults with albinism. There was a paint and sip where you could paint, you know, sort of like a follow along paint class. People are very into those. There were a couple of town hall sessions and of course there was the closing session. The closing session I think is very looked forward to by everyone at the conference, <laughs> especially in the last couple of years. Um, because in the last couple of years they started doing a NOAA choir so a choir full of people with albinism and it is just amazing because okay people with albinism stand out quite a lot we look very different especially when you put us all in a group together <laughs> so so getting to see that on a stage i saw the video it was beautiful and this year this year's choir was a virtual choir so it's even more work and skill to put together and i mean i just want to say thank you to the wonderful work of those who put it together and those who submitted videos. And um, if it makes it onto YouTube with licensing and all, you know, all the stuff that needs to be worked out for that, I will do my best to link it below and probably add a card too so you guys can check it out because it was very moving. Um, they sang the song You Will Be Found and if you've ever been anyone who feels slightly different or lost or alone I mean that song just really will speak to your heart it does to me I'm a I'm a big music nerd too I'll just add that to the list of my nerd qualities huge music nerd very passionate about music lyrics just it really speaks to me so this song I have to admit this song made me cry honestly I was sitting at my computer desk <laughs> crying <laughs> because it was just so beautiful honestly um but yeah, I'm gonna cry now thinking about it. But um, <laughs> the closing session also included the location of 2022's conference and 2024's conference this year. So the 2022 NOAA conference is going to be in Orlando and I <laughs> plan to go to my very first in-person NOAA conference in 2022. You heard it here, so if I don't go, you guys know. You better call me, okay? <laughs> but yeah, 
but I, <laughs> I plan to be there and I look forward to it. I have family down there and I never get to see them. I would love to see them and I'd love to go, go to Disney. I haven't been to check out any of the Star Wars stuff. <laughs> it's on my list of nerdery. <laughs> you know, the list just grows and grows. But um, anyway, I look forward to that. The 2024 conference is actually going to be in Orange County, California, which was where this year's was meant to be held. But it uh, wasn't because of, you know, extenuating world circumstances. You know, we all know. This, this was my first big event to cover on my website and well here for YouTube as well and it was really exciting it was really tiring mostly because I got sick <sighs> you guys know doing anything when you're sick and you don't feel well is so hard especially concentrating oh gosh <sighs> I was just exhausted Monday <laughs> it was just done but um I made it through and I feel like those who have read the post really enjoyed them and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed getting to live through my experiences a little bit and uh, I hope you will take it upon yourself to also go to a conference because community is everything. I mean, you, you find your tribe, your people, the ones you belong to, <sighs> there's nothing like it honestly. You can go from feeling very alone and very separated from <clears throat> from society to suddenly feeling like you belong and it's the most beautiful thing. And if you haven't done it, I recommend it, honestly, I really do. Anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, click that bell to catch my next videos. Um, I'm gonna get out of here and uh, go drink some water. Bye.